Sometimes when you're making a lot of repeated cross cuts here at the table saw, the off cut pieces sort of dance around the blade and it can be a little distracting wondering what might happen if the blade happens to catch one of those pieces. And it can happen, kicking back at you or at the very least nicking and damaging the off cut. Ironically, when looking at this video slowed down just a little, it turns out that the offcut actually does come back at me, but ricochets off the extended miter fence and flies to the other side of the shop. Now, I set myself up so I wouldn't be hit by this piece if it did come my way, but in a normal working situation, if it did fly up just a little bit higher and missed this fence, I would have been eating a piece of poplar chunk for lunch. Today I want to share with you guys three ways that you can prevent this from happening. One, if you are using a miter gauge and a stop block, which is the most productive method if you have a lot of pieces to cut, extend the miter gauge's fence wide enough to support both the material and the off cut and push the material all the way through until you completely clear the blade. Not only will this give you cleaner results on the rear exit side of the cut, it leaves a very small chance that that off cut can come in contact with the blade. Now, the only downside is that depending on what you're cutting, it can wear you out pretty quickly when you have a lot of cuts to make because you have to reach so far to clear that blade each time. Two, make a crosscut sled specifically designed to funnel off cuts away from the blade. The one I made handles small parts extremely well and has stop blocks specifically designed to eliminate the kickback while still being able to make accurate repeatable cuts. And as the pieces do pile up, you can clear them out without getting cozy with the blade. Now you can use or even modify a regular crosscut sled as well, but if you think about it, it's really no different than using a miter gauge with an extended fence when it comes to actually clearing those parts away from the blade. As long as you clear each off cut between cuts, you should be just fine, but this can be time consuming if you have a lot of pieces to cut. Three, make a ramp. Take a scrap piece of plywood with your miter gauge set to right around five degrees and cut off one end. Then set your miter gauge back to 90, flip the piece over and make another cut, starting just to the left of where that angle starts and only cutting about two thirds to three quarters of the way through. It should look something like this. Set that aside for now and get your miter gauge and material set up like you're going to actually make a cut. Push it forward until the material is just past where the blade will cleanly exit and leave it there. Then flip the piece of plywood back over, slide the kerf cut over the blade, butt it right up against the material and miter gauge, and secure it in place. Now as you make your cuts, the off cuts have no chance of coming in contact with the blades as they funnel away from it, and you have positive registration so you're only allowed to push the miter gauge just until it makes the cut, reducing the amount of energy you have to spend. Now I actually want to add one more thing here too, a zero clearance insert or throat plate is going to be super beneficial if you're using anything but a cross cut sled. Not only will it give you cleaner bottom exit cuts, but if your throat plate is a bit more open, air comes up through the gap and it blows the off cuts around. This can be a huge reason as to why your off cuts are dancing around the blade so much. Now, if you don't have a zero clearance insert or you can't make or buy one, I've been experimenting with this zero clearance tape from FastCap and so far it works pretty well. They're just inexpensive two inch by 16 inch PVC strips that you can stick down to your existing throat plate or insert to make it zero clearance. Now, I'm gonna make a whole separate video for these at some point going over whatever pros and cons I can find, but I will leave a link in the description if you wanna check them out. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching as always. I'll see you guys in the next video.